Let your eyes close. Use your awareness and notice all of the many things that are taking place in your mind, in your body, in your surroundings. Reminding yourself that all of these sensations and thoughts and situations happening are happening in in your field but they're not you you're the awareness and consciousness that can witness them all well sometimes this reminds me like i'm in a movie theater and i'm watching a movie during the movie, I can get so entranced as to what's happening on the screen. It's like I'm in the movie. I'm like a character in the movie, and I'm so fixated and focused on what's happening on the screen. But if I can bring my awareness back, I'll remember I'm actually sitting in a chair surrounded with, by all these other peoples in this room, and I'm watching a screen that's playing the movie just like what's happening within us. We can get so hypnotized into thinking that we are our thoughts or we are these experiences. So recognizing that we're so much bigger than that, so much more than that. We're the observer watching this play of life unfold. Draw your hands in front of your heart. And perhaps set an intention for your day or week. My intention is to entangle who I deeply am from this mind that is constantly thinking. And that's the freedom. Okay, we'll tune in with one ohm, one round of the Anusara invocation, followed with one more ohm. Take a full breath in. Squeeze and lengthen. We'll do three rounds of breath. Exhale. Last one. <sighs> oh. Oh. Chitananda Mortaye Nish Prapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Teja
When you're ready, keeping your eyes closed, bring your hands back down to your lap. So for 4th of July, I thought um, experiencing freedom would be a good theme. And I think letting go of the bind of the mind that always thinks is like the lack of freedom. And you know, to realize that we're not the mind that thinks and we can be the observer gives us a lot more freedom in the way we can experience life. So let's come up to standing. <clears throat> So as you inhale, stretch your arms up towards the sky, reach up, and then take your right hand to your left wrist, take a little side stretch up and over to the right, push down through your left foot more, and then begin to round through your back and draw a circle all the way over to the left, stay low, and then draw the circle all the way back over to the right. So you're kind of like a little mini squat. And then straighten the legs back to your side stretch. Oh, and then come back up to center. Switch sides. Left hand holds the right wrist. Root down through your feet. Get tall. Bend towards the left. Puff up through the right rib cage. And then begin to bend the knees a little bit. Pull the belly into the spine. And start to circle your hands towards the front of the room. As the back rounds to the back of the room, take your hands over to the right. And then reverse the direction. And then straighten your leg, side stretch to the left. Oh, come back up through center. Reach both arms up. And then stretch your arms out, around, and down behind you. Interlace your hands behind your back. Bend your knees a little bit and open up through the chest. Keep a little bend through your knees. Move your throat back to the cervical vertebrae in line with the rest of the vertebrae and keep the floating ribs pulled in. Now keep the knees bent. Keep the bind in your hands. Bring your belly to the thighs. Stretch your knuckles up to the sky. Draw the shoulders up away from the ears. Take little head rotations. And then release your hands to the floor and begin to alternatively bend and straighten the legs. Being aware that you're not hyperextending the leg that's straightening. Okay, push into both feet, straighten the legs and inhale, lengthen forward, Ardha Uttanasana. All right, belly in. Imagine you're prepping yourself for plank here. Core in, shoulders back, neck long, and then plant your hands, step back to plank. Belly draws into the spine, shoulders integrate and draw together. Lengthen back through your heels and forward through your neck. And then take your feet a little bit wider than your hips. Try to not let your belly button to hands move and windshield wiper the legs. So both heels will go to the left and then both heels will go to the right. Come back through center and then bend your knees. Come into table pose. So you might need to shorten your stance, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Cat cow, inhale, arch the back. Exhale, press through the hands around the spine. Moving with your breath. Seeing how deeply you can breathe without it becoming too distracting. Bringing more energy into the system. On your next exhale, round the spine, sit your hips back to your heels, child's pose. Walk your hands over to the left. 
Bend your left elbow, place your left hand by your left hip, push down like chaturanga, and stretch out through your right fingertips more. Walk your hands back and over to the right. Right arm bends, hand under elbow, lifting the belly in and up to the right. Stretch your left fingertips away from you. Okay, come back to center. Push through your hands as you inhale, come up and puff the spine up to the sky. So this is the opposite breath than we normally do. So the inhale will be rounding the spine. And as you exhale, arch the spine, stick your tongue out, lion's breath. Inhale, round. Exhale, out, tongue out, long. Last one. On the exhale, imagine you're getting any built up, built up frustration out. And then tuck your toes down or facing dog. Take a few breaths in your down dog to create more length, space, and integration. And then as you inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. Keep your hips squared. Push out through your feet and hands. Exhale, step your right foot forward between your hands. Left knee lowers to the floor or the blanket. Inhale, stretch your arms up to the sky. Push down through your feet and pull the spine up towards the sky. Space between the vertebrae. Exhale, plant your hands. Step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg up. Outer left hip spinning in down to the floor. Step your left foot forward between your hands. Anjani Asana. Plant your hands, set back to plank. And on your next exhale, control lower, pausing at the bottom and coming down to your belly. Lengthen and curl, cobra. Downward facing dog. As you inhale, look forward, bottom of your exhale, step or flow, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. And bow. And then inhale, come all the way up, stretch up. Exhale, hands through heart center, Samasta to He, equal standing. I'm going to do a variation of Sun Salutation B. So as you inhale, bend your knees, reach for the floor, and then stretch your arms to the sky, Utkatasana. Exhale, straighten your legs and fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, plant to your hands, step back and lower down, Chaturanga. Inhale, long cobra. More length. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. Exhale, step your right foot forward between your hands. Pause and stretch, hips back, push through your feet, spine forward. 
So a classical sun B is left heel down for warrior one. So you can choose to ground the back heel or stay on the ball of the foot. As you inhale, come all the way up. Imagine you could pull yourself long like taffy, running down through the base and stretching up through the top. As you exhale, plant your hands, step back and lower down chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, step. When you're ready, lift up into your lunge or warrior one. And as you exhale, plant to your hands, step back, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. We'll do this one more round and we'll do one breath per movement. So we'll finish this one looking forward, bottom of your exhale, step or hop, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, stretch your arms alongside your ears, Utkatasana. Exhale, straighten your legs, hands through heart center. Samastatihi. Oh, hey, inhale, bend your knees, stretch your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, plant your hands, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, squeeze the legs together, pull yourself up, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, step forward. One breath, inhale, come up. And then as you exhale, plant your hands, step back, lower. Inhale, slither long. Exhale, core in, down dog. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, step forward, push through the feet. Inhale, one breath. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. A few rounds of breath here. Be the observer of your process. Look forward, bottom of your exhale, step or hop, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, tone your core, stretch your arms up. Exhale, samasta to he. Okay, really nice. This is currently my, my favorite move. Take your hands to your hips. And we're gonna like move with our right foot towards first position. So I'm gonna take up the ball of my right foot and like pivot it out. Boop. Boop. <laughs> so first position, shift the weight to your left foot and push down through your left foot and then float your right knee up. And then open your arms. So this is like the position for the sh um, Shiva Namaskar. Squat a little bit in the left foot. Begin to move your arms. So Shiva Namaskar, dancing, 
life into existence, death, destruction, rebirth, hint of a smile, steadiness. So much beautiful teachings in this story of Shiva as the dancer, the Natrasha. Uh -huh. And then we're going to stomp our foot three times to help put out the ignorance. One, two, hi. How's that powerful? Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> okay. Begin. Left foot pivots. Shoop. Shoop. <laughs> okay. Stand on the right foot. Push down through it. Float the left foot up. Squat down through the right foot, the right knee. Open your arms. Feel yourself as this master of yoga. Hmm, represents destruction, disillusionment. All with a hint of a smile because he knows the cycle of life. Hi, okay, here we go. Let's step out the ignorance. We need it. Do it for the world. Stomp out the ignorance. One, two, hi. <laughs> and release. Fun times. Okay. We're going to do standing pigeons. Let's stand on the right foot to start with. Lift the left knee up. Engage the leg so the hip moves and not the knee. Cross your ankle over the, the knee and draw the booty back. And then hands to the thigh. Keep your belly button drawing in towards the spine as you rotate your inner thighs towards the wall behind you and try to spread the hips away from each other. Okay. Keep the bend in your knee, bow forward, touch the floor. Drop your head, draw your shoulders towards your hips, maybe circle the head out. Okay, option, stay here or do the arm balance, bending the elbows, wrapping the left foot around the outer edge of the right tricep, shifting forward, bending your elbows like Chaturanga. The key here is to kick the left shin into the bicep and then see if you can transition the right leg back. And if you can't, you can bring your hands to the floor and hop back or just however you want to get there. Left foot back, no, right foot back, left knee into the chest. And step, oh, left foot forward. Feeling the heat. Okay, high runner's lunge twist. Widen your right hand, keep your hips symmetrical. Spin your belly to the left. Stretch your arm up or over your ear. Really nice. Unwind. Bring your right hand, nope, left hand to the right knee, and then step forward and thread the right foot forward. And come into a brief seated meditation. Try to engage Mula Bandha, which is the first lock of engaging the pelvic floor muscles in and up. That's like the plug that keeps your energy in. And as you inhale, imagine that your breath can go all the way up your spine, 300 feet at least above your head. And as you exhale, keep Mula Mula bond in, and as you exhale, try to like circulate yourself throughout all the space which you are. Helping remove the idea that we're just this physical body or just this thinking mind. And the next time you inhale, hold it. 
Squeeze the root lock and lift all the way up to at least 300 feet above you, get taller. And then exhale, release. Uh -huh. Navasana. Bringing your feet in front of you, differentiating between your tailbone or your sacrum and your sitting bones, rocking up onto your sitting bones, pulling your knees in. The way I like to do this one is straightening my legs, but I like to, I like to kind of cheat by holding my feet. Stay long. Okay, now from here, you can either stay here or lower down to a lower version. Belly in, lengthen the back of your neck away from your feet, and then oh, come back up. Shoulders integrate, spine long, up on the sitting bones, lower. Up. Lower. Up. And release. Cross your feet, plant your hands, hop back, downward facing dog, or step. Right, inhale, come forward to plank. All these vinyasas are optional, lower down. Inhale, lengthen and curl. Downward facing dog. And developing the skill to notice when you've hooked on to a thought. And uh, this past week when I was camping, I figured out the perfect way of noting a thought without getting more sucked into the thought. And I would just say, oh, how funny. Look at Kim's brain trying to figure something out again. And then try to slip back into the observer mode. Look forward, step or hop, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Push through your feet, come all the way up. And hands through heart center. Round two, standing on the left foot, lifting your right knee up. Crossing right ankle over outer right knee. Broaden the hips. Hands start on your thigh. In order to make this a, an effective hip opener, we want to have the low spine stabilized as the inner thighs move back. So pull your low belly in, almost like you're trying to round through your low back just a little bit and your floating ribs pull in. And then in resistance to that, the inner thighs move. It's a more subtle movement. Hips push away from each other. And then keep the legs touch the floor. Bottom knee is not hyperextended. And then stay here, go into Ekagalambhasana, planting your hands like Chaturanga, shifting your weight forward, kicking the right shin into the arms, left leg maybe extends, and then eventually try to work the left leg back. Then pull the right knee into your chest, oh, so strong, and then step. Right foot forward, high runner's lunge. Yeah, <laughs> I'll gallop backwards, okay. Left hand on the floor, twist and stretch. Unwind, right hand comes to the top of the knee. Root down through your right foot and your left fingertips. Pull your left knee into your chest. However you want to make your way to your bum, do that. You can slide the left foot through. Seated meditation. Maybe coming back to that breath awareness, squeezing the root law, inhaling up into the cosmos, 
exhale, penetrating the space all around you. One more full inhale. Squeeze your root lot, try to get 300 feet above your head. So like so tall, you're so big. Feel the space that you are and exhale. Okay, Navasana round two. When we went camping, we went to the site. There's this river, but it was super low. So I could sit and meditate in the river I was doing the Boston and it was so cool to be like in the river. You could imagine you're in your favorite river or imagine your imagination river. Sit bones down, belly in, spine long. Okay, exhale, lower down, belly to the spine, get long, long neck, long legs. Oh, crunch up. Uh -huh. I'm gonna show you the harder way to do it too lower down when you come up you'll open your legs wide and bring your arms through your legs oh, it's so much harder lower down and, up. and down and up last one down this time legs together and release Sit still and notice. I plant your hands, step or hop back, downward facing dog. Okay, inhale, right leg up to the sky. Bend your right knee and open your hips. Option one, stay here. Option two, come forward towards plank. Spin your left heel to the floor and then come into wild thing. Right hips lift up to the sky, push down to the left hand. And then plant the right hand, pull the right knee into your belly and step the foot forward between your hands. Nice, round your back knee to the floor. Inhale, stretch up. On your next exhale, fingertips come to the floor or blocks. Straighten both legs, Parsvottanasana. So moving with the breath, keeping your hips squared as you inhale, bending the knees. On Johnny Asana. As you exhale, rooting the fingers, strengthening and straightening the legs. Last round. We'll hold this one. Either, pull, either pulling your spine evenly forward, keeping your back long and straight, or hinging and bowing. Lift your kneecaps up to your hips, and from your hips, push down through the inner and outer edges of both feet. On your next inhale, lengthen the spine if you rounded. And then exhale, bend your knees to the floor. Low lunge, quad stretch. One hand could stay on your thigh or your hip, or both hands back to the foot. Squeeze the left glute, push through the left knee, and draw your navel in and up to your throat. Float the crown of your head up to the ceiling. Okay, 
All right, release your foot. Step back, downward facing dog, or move through a vinyasa. And when you're ready, inhale, left leg to the sky, bend the knee, open the hips. Three-legged downward facing dog, or shift the shoulders towards the hands, ground down the outer edge of the right foot, left toes touch. Wild thing. And pivoting back to plank, pulling your left knee into your belly, and then stepping the foot forward. Flowing between Anjaniasana and Parsvottanasana. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, straighten the legs. Moving with your breath. Last round, we'll hold the Parsvottanasana for a few extra breaths. Lengthening the spine away from the pelvis or symmetrically rounding forehead towards shin. Bend your front knee over your ankle, bend the back knee down, quad stretch. Mm, perhaps coming back to that same root lock, inhaling, spiraling up the spine out into the cosmos. Exhale, moving into the space from root to top and out around in all directions. Really nice downward facing duck. Inhale, right leg to the sky. Bend your knee, open your hip. Stay here or wild thing. Maybe looking, drawing the head back, gazing towards the right fingertips. As you reach the right fingertips towards the direction of the floor, long spine, press and lengthen. And then pull knee into the belly. Step your foot forward between your hands. Back heel ground, second warrior pose. Take a moment to find your strong warrior two legs. And then tip up and back, reverse warrior. Come forward, elbow to thigh, modified Parsva Knossma. A few rounds of breath here. Same refinement as in a standing pigeon. Low belly pulls in as the inner thighs spiral back. On your next inhale, reverse warrior. And exhale, modified Parsva or Parsva Konasana. Fingertips or hand to the inside or outside the foot. Inhale, all the way back up. Use your core, use your legs. Reverse warrior, straighten the front leg. Reverse tree kanasana. And then come forward. Maybe work your feet farther away from each other. 
Trikonasana. Squeeze your muscles and expand. Right, pivot your right foot to the left, wide leg forward fold, lengthen. Rib cage pulls away from hips, hips press away from rib cage. Stay long and parallel to the floor or bow. Walk your right hand in, like, towards the front of the head on the floor. The left hand comes through, holding onto the outer right shin or thigh, and then twist yourself from the left to the right. So this is like threaded needle and standing wide leg forward fold. Strong feet, strong body, twist and expand. Inhale, unwind, switch your hands, left hand comes forward, bend the left elbow towards the sky, right arm walks through, holds onto the outer edge of the left leg. You're pulling yourself with your right hand to the left and you're pushing away the ground with your left hand. Inhale, unwind. Lengthen, restabilize, consolidate your energy in. And then make your way back, downward facing dock. Okay, inhale, left leg up, three legged down dog or modified wild thing, or not modified, wild thing, core in. Try to make your round symmetrical so not one vertebrae is rounding more or less than the others. Maybe gazing back towards your left fingertip, chin stays in. And then stepping your left foot forward between your hands, second warrior pose. Notice what leg feels like it has more is doing more work oftentimes the front leg will try to do more work see if you can get just as much effort from your back leg 50 percent of effort front leg 50 percent of effort back leg inhale reverse warrior exhale hinge left elbow to thigh modified parsvakanasana On your next inhale, reverse warrior. And then modified or full parts of a kanasana. Front knee stays bent over the ankle. Push through the back foot, reach through the front arm, right arm. Use your core. Reverse. Straight in the front leg from your feet, pull your muscles up to your hips. From your hips, reach through your feet. Stretch your left arm forward, maybe lengthening your feet away from each other. Trikonasana. Be the observer. What do you notice in this pose in your body and your thoughts? And wide leg forward fold. Okay, options. You can repeat that same threaded needle twist we just did 
So let's say I'm taking the right hand forward where it was kind of in front of the face and then thread left hand through, hold the right leg. You can stay here pulling with your left arm and pushing into the ground with your right arm or you can take your right hand up to the sky and then wrap your right hand behind your back and hook the inner thigh of your left leg. So my top arm, my right arm is wrapped behind my back and is holding the inner flesh of my left leg. And then bending your left elbow, maybe pull your forehead in the direction of your right shin. If that didn't make sense, just ignore it. Do any twist here and you'll do great. Inhale, release the bind or your twist, lengthen. Switch side, left fingertips stay on the floor, right arm wrap reaches through, hooks outside edge of left, left leg. And twist yourself from the right to the left. Stay here or stretch your left arm towards the sky. Back of the left hand comes on the sacrum, thread, walking your hand towards the right and then hooking the flesh of the right inner thigh. Staying here or pulling the forehead towards the left shin. Strong, active legs. Inhale, unwrap, lengthen, consolidate the energy in. Really nice standard facing dog. And bend the knees to the floor. We're gonna do half Virasana. We'll keep the left knee bent. We'll put the right foot forward. So like the full version of this pose is that the left foot pulls slightly to the left. So it'll come just to the outside of the left greater trochanter and the butt sits equally on the floor. I use a little blanket or a block. And you have to adjust a little bit because you want the weight equal between both sitting bones. And then once you get there, this is, should be like a quad stretch or a cobra foot. So the toes facing straight back. There's no sickling. Second and third toe in line at the middle of the heel. Come back to your breath. Inhale, squeeze your root lock. And then as you exhale, pull your belly button in and up. Studiana Vonda. Belly softens, root lock. Exhale, belly in and up. Okay, hold the belly in and up so you can stay here and breathe, or you can begin to recline. Hips stay on the floor. You can just bend your elbows. You can take your forearms to the floor, or you can slither yourself onto your back. You want to keep the left knee to the floor. You don't want it lifting up. And people tend to, especially over arch here, so try to wrap your pelvis under and squeeze your belly button to the spine and try to take out any intense back bending. I like to either have my left heel of my hand on my left heel, my right hand on my hip, and try to root my legs away from my belly, drawing in and up, or stretch the arms towards the wall behind me. And then we'll come up the opposite way we come in. Ideally, the head would be the last thing that lifts, but sometimes that doesn't happen to me. So push yourself up to your elbows and walk your hands up and then head. And then when you're ready, switch your sides.
right knee is now bent, looking at the right foot, avoiding any sickling. Get nice and tall. Stay upright or begin to lower down. This is one of the best. It's not, this is a very advanced pose. I don't often teach in public classes. It's such an efficient way of stretching the quadricep muscles, the hip flexors, so as ribs pull in, pelvis wraps under, try to push your right knee away from you. You could even experiment with squeezing the right glute to push out through the right knee, similar to what we do when we're in a low lunge quad stretch. Maybe your hands rest on your belly or they help push through the hips in the right heel or they stretch up over your head. A few more rounds of breath. Okay, and then begin to walk yourself up and out. And we'll make our way to our a low lunge. Since my blanket's here, I'm going to use it as a knee cushion. I'll start with the right foot forward. Ah, half on him on, hinge. Spread the toes, engage the muscles up into the pelvis. Just like in those other poses I've been pointing out, the low belly stays strong and in as the inner thighs try to spin backwards. And then I've been really enjoying keeping the whole right leg strong and then moving my right foot in and out. When I do that, the back foot will often move. Remembering that this is trying, we're trying to affect the hips. So you want the rotation of the right foot to go all the way up into the hip socket. The next time the right pinky toe moves towards the right, walk both of your hands over to the outside edge of the right shin and see how much you can twist your belly towards the back of your yoga mat as you Drag your sitting bones back and maybe walking your left fingertips towards the right corner of your room. Left fingertips reaching out to the right corner of the room, bringing the belly button closer to the thigh. Sitting bones spin back and then your right hand pushes down and tries to twist you a little bit from the left to the right. All, all the stretches. And then See if you can become the observer of yourself stretching instead of getting hooked into the intensity of the stretch. Okay, come back to center. Option one, you can stay here, or option two, wiggle your front foot so that the front foot moves a little bit more forward. And then lift up your back, and then switch your back knee a little bit further back. And then wiggle your front foot a little bit further forward and then move your back knee a little bit further back. It's like a sneak attack. If you only move one, you're just so where you're going into splits. But if you move both, wherever you're at, see if you can stay present, not, not jumping out to avoid, also not being so sucked in that it, you, the stretch becomes the only thing that you're experiencing. Five deep, slow breaths. This last round of breath, try to push your legs further away from each other. So the legs get long, pull your belly in and shoot the crown of your head up to the sky. Oh, and then... Pull, pull it back together. Awesome. 
Uh, second side. Ah. Throw, that, throw that left baby up there. Half Hanuman. Connect your body parts with your muscles. And then begin that little windshield wiper action with the left foot, bringing movement all the way to the right foot. Helping to melt away any binding at the hips. The next time the left pinky toe moves to the left, walk yourself towards the left. The left hand will be pushing down on the floor and trying to spin the belly button from the right to the left. And then walk like your right hand's a spider walking to the left corner of your room. And you be the observer of the stretch without checking out. You don't want to become indifferent or desensitized to what's happening. What we don't want to overly identify with what's happening is who we are. Stay in the posture, try to drag the sitting bones backwards. And rewind back through center. Take a moment to remind yourself that your sides of the body are not the same. So letting go of any attachment you have about what this side of Hanumanasana is going to look like. And then begin your sneakiness. Dog wagon your left foot forward and then walking the right knee back. And then wagging and walking. And you wanna find a place that's not painful, but it's probably not going to be comfortable either. Be able to differentiate between the two. Just like in that reclined half Hanum or half hero pose, the tendency is to overly arch the low back or turn your back hip open. So right hip stays facing forward, belly button to spine, long legs, long torso. One more long, slow round of breath. And then uh, sit off onto your left hip, swing right leg around, and lay back onto your back. Uh -huh. mm. And do little cat cow tilts in your pelvis, massaging out your low back. Seeing it, do this with your hands on your rib cage, your floating ribs, and see if you can do these cat cows without the ribs moving too much. And then find the, the, the space between the cat and the cow. So the pelvis bowl should be perpendicular to the floor with a slight space under your low back. Not too big and not too little. Push down through the feet. <clears throat> set up your elbows. Integrate the shoulders. Push down through the back of the head. Chin slightly in so the back of the neck lengthens. Lift your hips up. Push into your feet and lift your chest more towards your face. Keep the lift in your heart and then push through your feet and try to drag your heels towards your head to help traction the spine in the direction of the knees.
And so lower down. We're gonna do two more back bends. So you could repeat bridge, you could do bridge with a block under the hips, or you could do full back bend. I think I am going to do full back bend and then do supported bridge. So you're gonna do full back bend, the hands placed by the ears, fingertips pointing towards the heels, pause on the top of the head to integrate the shoulders and then maybe straighten the arms. Getting ready to do your third round of back bends or resting. Really nice, and then come all the way down. If you're not already, you pull your knees into your belly. Roll side to side a little bit. And you can either roll over to your side and make your way up to sitting, or if it's okay for your spine, you can run, right, roll. Roll up and back, massaging out the vertebrae. And come all the way up to sitting. So I'm gonna step on a little edge. Uh -huh. So we're gonna do a few rounds of John Usir Sasana variations. The first one will extend the right leg out to the right. Ugh. And the left foot will be on the floor pulled in as close as we can to the hip. So in this variation, my left sit bone normally ends up lifting up, to, off, up off the floor. Right leg strong and straight, little bend in the knee, femur rooting, hinge down so the right, Elbow comes, right forearm comes to the floor inside of the right shin. Spin up to the sky. Then you can keep your hand on your, left hand on your knee or stretch your left arm up to the sky. Maybe stretch the left arm up over your ear. Maybe you can find your toes and hold on to your toes. My left arm's reaching up and over. And then what I like about these variations is you can use your right hand. So for this one, the right hand would come and would hold on to the front of the left ankle. And then you can pull with your right hand on your left foot. You can pull to twist your chest up to the sky. And then you can pull on your right foot with your left hand. So you've got this pulling in both directions. Okay, and then we're gonna release turning the hands turning over the right leg, and then walk your hands back up. If I was ever like picked up in a tornado like Dorothy was in The Wizard of Oz, that's how I'd imagine it. Like you get picked up and thrown around, and then you come out and you're like, ah, oh, steady grounds in a magical land. Okay, round two. So the right foot pulls in, Left leg is strong, hinging, so the left arm's to the inside edge of the left leg. You could also put a block under here to raise the floor, turning your chest up. You can imagine there's a wall behind you and you're trying to lean your shoulders back and your head back and the floating ribs pull back. And right arm goes up or over your ear or holds the toes. Maybe left hand comes and holds the front of the right shin. So good. Pull yourself longer as you pull yourself deeper into the twist. Lengthen through the back of the neck too. Oh, and then we'll twist over the left leg and walk your way back up. 
We'll do one more round of those. So and your option is to keep your leg like we did in the first variation or pull the foot so it's in this half Hanuman. So the left heel would be right next to the greater trochanter. The toes point straight back, no sickling of the foot. So again, hinging to the inside edge of the right knee. Arm stretches up and over. It maybe holds on to the foot. This is a little bit of a weird one to get into. The right hand will hold the same position on the, or it's gonna hold around the left ankle bone. So your right hand kind of has to crawl its way under your left thigh and then find your right back of the like Achilles tendon to hold on to. And then again, you can kind of pull yourself a little bit more. If your left hand hold, has the foot, you can play with using your left hand to pull the right foot back into a deeper dorsiflexion, or you can push the right foot into the hand and use the foot kind of flointing to help pull more length into the left side. Release, walk yourself so you're folded over the right leg and come on up. Okay, last one. Hinging to the inside of the left leg. Right arm stretches up and over, maybe holds foot. You could stay here. You can also take your, if you have the flexibility for it, to the, hold both feet with the hand, or excuse me, hold the hand with, hold the foot, the left foot with both hands, or take your left hand, walk it underneath your right thigh, and find your right ankle, and then twist yourself deeper. And then twist yourself over your left leg and walk yourself up. Very nice. Extend both of your feet forward. Dandasana. I like to pull the glutes back here. Flex your feet. Little bend in your knees. Top of the femur bones push down. Low belly pulls in and up. So the belly is pulling in the opposite direction as the thighs are ro rotating. Fingertips on the floor alongside the hips. Try to float the vertebrae of the spine up to the sky. Stretch your arms up towards the sky. Use the arm stretching up to help pull the rib cage further away from the pelvis. And then as you exhale, hollow out the belly. Belly button comes towards the spine as you hinge forward. So the belly stays really hollow. It's important for people who are a little more flexible. And then hold on to the feet and pull your crown of the head towards your toes. Okay, inhale, deeply squeeze the pelvis floor. Try to pull yourself a little bit longer as you hold your inhale. And then exhale all the way, stay in the posture. Pull the belly in, squeeze your pelvic floor. Muscles lengthen even more. And then inhale and release. Walk yourself up. Okay, last one. Take your feet wide. Ugh. Adjust your sitting pillow if you're using one. So toes up to the sky, kneecaps up to the sky. 
Low belly stays in as the top of the thighs ground down. Stretch your arms up. Try to pull the rib cage up away from the pelvis. Now keep the legs where they are. Engage them so they're not going to rotate as you fold. And then as you exhale, pull yourself down. Use your hands. Try to pull yourself forward. You can come onto your forearms. You can stack your hands. You could even stay upright. Take five rounds of breath here. Walk, begin to walk your hands back up. Nice. Hold underneath the knees. We'll root the femur bones. I like my legs slightly closer together for this. Pull the base of the femurs up as you root the top of the femurs down. Pull your belly in and up. Maybe like wiggle your sitting bones into the floor. Maybe wiggle the ribs around. And pull your knees into your a seated meditation posture. We'll do an easy twist, turn towards the left, left hand behind the back, right hand can be in front of the right knee or to the outside edge of the left knee. Inhale as you release, twist in the other direction. Come back through center, stay either upright in seated meditation or come lay down on your back for Shavasana.
And keeping yourself still, bring a little bit of your awareness back. Become the observer of the experience. The more we can remind ourselves that we're the observer of the experience, the more that we're the slave of the mind and imprisoned in the thinking mind. Instead, the mind becomes a tool to help us. When you're ready, move your toes and fingers around. Maybe stretch the arms up towards the wall behind you. And when you're ready, come up to a seated meditation. We'll end the practice with a few minutes of Nadi Shodhana meditation. So you take your right hand and you take your two piece fingers, index and middle, into the palm of your hand. So your thumb is extended and your ring and your pinky is extended. And then you place them on the outside of the nostrils so they're on like the cheeks. And then it close off the right nostril with the thumb and inhale through the left nostril. Hold briefly at the top and then close off the left nostril, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close off the right, breathe out through the left. Inhale through the left. Breathe out through the right. Breathe in through the right. And out through the left. Continue like this. You'll switch after every inhale. The next time you inhale through the left nostril, hold the breath. And when you're ready, release into a seated meditation. You draw the hands up in front of the heart. This is a modified quote from Eckhart Tolle. So it says, the beginning of freedom is the realization that you are not the thinker, dot, dot, dot. 
you realize that all the things that truly matter, beauty, love, creativity, joy, inner peace, arise from beyond the mind. You begin to awaken. Let's end with one ohm. Take a full breath in. Oh. Namaste.